Hello there, dear viewer, and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Jakob Hack. I'm your host, and you're watching a Hack Attack episode. And in this episode, I'm going to show you something dope inside AUM, how to set up a macro controller, macro MIDI CC controller, and what can you do with that? Well, for many years, people have been asking me through the comments, Jakob, can you do this? And so what is this? Well, if you look closely, you can see me moving one knob on the MIDI controller here, and several things are happening inside the synth and in various ways. I'll show you exactly how to set it up, but before we get into it, Now we're gonna open up the instance of Moog Model D that I've got loaded right here. And if it looks weird to anyone, I'm using this zoomed in mode, which you can enter by just double tapping inside the controller area. So if I double tap, it goes back to normal. If I double tap again, it zooms in. And I like having big knobs on the screen. Now to access the MIDI controller mode, we tap this icon up here and we get this window popping up. As you can see, we have no MIDI source right now. And so we tap this and make sure that we have our MIDI controller connected to this instance of Moog Model D. Now I've got two controllers in the list, but right now I'm gonna use the uh, Nano Control Studio, and so I select that one. You would of course select whatever controller you are using. And to any beginners out there, yes, if you have a MIDI controller and it has knobs and faders and it sends out MIDI CC data, then yes, your controller can do it too. Right, so now that we have our controller selected, we are going to jump back by tapping there and we're going to activate the MIDI Learn mode. And we do that by tapping this icon here. And now we have a little knob icon wagging back and forth and we got a blue frame around the synthesizer. So in this state, any controller that we tweak, not tap, but tweak, well, it will prompt us with a MIDI setting window. All right, so I want to map the waveform selector for oscillator one to this fader right here. And so all I need to do is to tap, hold and tweak the waveform selector. And there we have our box. Now from here on out, all we need to do is to tap learn and then tweak our controller and there it's learned. Now, we're not gonna see any change because we're still in the MIDI learn mode. And if we wanna keep on mapping stuff, we just press next. If we do not wanna keep on mapping stuff and we wanna see what the controller is actually doing, then we just press done. And right now I'm gonna press done. Now, when I tweak this, you're gonna see the waveform selector move but it's moving too much. I just want to move between a few of these waveforms. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna enter the MIDI learn mode again and tweak this. Now I get this box, we can see our learn controller here. And if we look down here, we can see that we have a range control and this allows you to set the range for the controller itself. Right now it goes from zero to a hundred which means that we're getting the full range when we're tweaking this fader. So from zero to a hundred. Now this can be inverted by moving this point up here and this point down here. And now when I slide this fader, you will see that the waveform selector tweaks the other way, you know, in an opposite direction. Now I'm gonna go in here again. First, I'm gonna turn it around, but I'm gonna limit the range to about 80% and about 50% like that. Now this will make the range smaller. Even though I'm moving it the whole way here, we can only select two pulse waveforms. What we've actually been doing here is basic MIDI CC mapping. And to get into macro territory, well, we simply need to do the same thing over and over and over again, adding more synth controls to this one fader 
until we have our macro set up. Macros aren't just about being able to control as many elements as possible with one fader, one button or one knob. It's also about how these elements are behaving when we're controlling them. And that's why it's so important to know how to invert a controller or to limit its range. And through the power of video editing, here's an example. Now, I've made sure to set up each knob to move in varying directions and also varying movement ranges. By the way, did anyone notice the warning sign earlier? Look right here. This warning pops up when you're trying to map a MIDI CC that is already in use. In this case, it's MIDI CC2. So when you're setting up a macro inside AUM, you'll see this a lot because you're continuously mapping the same CC. Now, one thing to note is that you can actually do this in other apps besides AUM, but some apps won't even allow you to do this. You see, you can try to map the same CC to two knobs and the app will either block you or it will remove the first instance that you mapped. But in AUM, you can do this only you'll see this warning, but you don't really have to worry about it. Now, there are loads of interesting uses for macros. And there is this one thing I often set up in synths when doing live performances and or recording sessions. You see, when sweeping the cutoff down and resonance up in a filter, you often end up with an increasingly louder squelching sound. Well, to balance that out, you know, in amplitude, I will often set up a macro where I also sweep the amplitude or volume down. And that way I end up with a more balanced output. You can set up macros with buttons where when you're pressing a button, you're turning some functions off and others get turned on at the same time. You can be creative with your macros and you can make it so that a sound fades from left to right in the stereo field while the oscillators gets detuned, for instance. Like I said, there are many interesting ways of using a macro. What if you want to do this macro stuff, but you don't really have a MIDI controller? You, you just want to use some app maybe to do it? Well, it is possible as you've seen here. I mean, I'm doing it in this video right here. And what I'm using is actually a plugin that comes with Ape Matrix. Now you can do this with other MIDI apps. The problem is though that you can't use MIDI Learn to make it happen because this box, whenever it's up, it prevents you from touching any other apps in the background. So what you're gonna have to do is manually search for the right CC number, find that controller in the list, assign it, and yeah, you can do exactly what I've been doing here. Now I've shown you how to build macros and control these macros with external MIDI controller hardware and also internal MIDI controller apps. But what about automated and modulated macros? What's going on here is, well, I'm running AudioKit's AR909. It's a drum machine, which sounds awesome, by the way. And as you can see, there's a lot of knobs moving around in here. Well, I've basically built a macro and I'm using MIDI LFOs here, which is an app that puts out MIDI CC data, but it uses LFOs to do it. And so here is another way of doing some interesting macro stuff. Now, there are more apps like this. One thing that comes to mind is uh, Bram Bose's Rosetta, for instance. There's loads of modules in there and it even has an LFO module. And I think I'm gonna round off the video with that. Now, if you do anything macro-wise, I wanna see it. So make sure you follow me on Instagram. It's at Jakob underscore hack. And if you put up something macro related, then please tag me. Well, there you go. That's how you set up a macro inside AUM. And remember to save your session, otherwise 
you lose all your work, okay? And for those of you who do not know, I do have a second channel which I live stream on only, and it's the opposite of this one. This one is produced material. The other one is for us to hang out and talk about topics that you've voted for. If you want to support the work I do on this channel, then you can share this video. And before you leave, just leave a like. If you like the uh, content, leave a dislike if you didn't. And then also, uh, if you want to support me in a financial way, you got Patreon, PayPal. All comments and ratings are very much appreciated. Now, as usual, I wish you a very productive week. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it.